Hey everybody, Keldon here. Uh, today I'm just going to show you guys uh, quickly a uh, few things on getting started with doing clothing and decks in Substance Painter. Um, first thing I'm just going to show you really quickly is where to put your textures and materials that you download. And, uh, anything you want to be inside Substance, you'll just throw it, uh, just go to your documents, algorithmic, Substance Painter, shelf, and this is where everything goes. Um, anything uh, like deck textures and all that kind of stuff, just put it in uh, textures. And then, yeah, everything else you'll probably have to download from the site or whatever. And then um, they'll go in the corresponding folder. Really easy. All right, so let's open up Substance Painter. I'll start with a, a t-shirt just to show you guys. Um, clothing's much easier and then I'll I'll delve a little, little bit into the skateboard creation I'm actually not going to create a full t-shirt or anything like that not a usable one right at this time um, takes me too long to to uh, do it I don't want to make like a four-hour video here of me tweaking and and checking and tweaking so we'll just kind of we'll just kind of mess around so I'm gonna open a new one under unity 5 um, you can set the document re resolution to whatever you want here. Um, default is 2K, so we'll just leave it at 2K. And we'll open our uh, our file here. Um, so this is uh, just where I have all my, uh, my files. So we got my shirt here. We'll open up the shirt and click OK. And there's our shirt. So now we'll have to do a few things to it. Um, the texture set list here, uh, we only got the one texture, one shirt, one texture. Um, when I show you the skate, there'll be more to deal with over here, but right now it's just that. And it's got this ugly texture name here, so I'm just going to rename it to sh shirt. Um, it'll make it easier for you to separate your files later by naming it, you know, <clears throat> maybe you want a shirt. plan B right or whatever you can type it in there and then uh, when you generate your files it'll give it a different name so that you won't be overwriting the same file every time you can just save to the same folder and all that uh, so I go through a few little steps here uh, every time I load a model into substance um, I delete the the default layer uh, I have no good reason to do that no good reason at all. I'm just going to put a layer exactly the same as it back in here. But I always delete it anyways. So you don't have to do that. Uh, the next thing is, uh, as you can see, um, we got some ugly ass orange um, crap on the bottom of our uh, t-shirt here. Looks all freaking stupid. So um, in your display settings on the side or wherever you have this toolbar set up, um, just go to the environment map. It's at the very beginning, so if you're if you're anywhere else in this, just click this little environment icon, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, and go to your environment map. Uh, you can use any of these black and white ones. The the soft five day uh, one is pretty good. Uh, I like the to uh, Tomoko Studio. That's my personal fave. And as you can see, when I click it, the shirt instantly looks so much better. Um, doesn't have the silly, uh, you know, orange under parts. All that is, is it's the reflection of the shirt reflecting off what, what would be the environment. So before we had more like a, a sand or dirt underneath us, that's what was creating that orange reflection. Now we've got like a black floor, so it's given us shading more like that. Yeah, it's just much easier to to judge how your um, your shirt's gonna look in this lighting. Um, I'm not gonna go over too much of like the different tools and everything. Uh, you guys can get that information from other tutorials. This is just basically the Skater XL only. So now I'm gonna go over here to my texture set settings, um, and the first thing I'm gonna do is add myself a channel here for ambient occlusion um, 
you know, for a shirt, it's it's not going to matter too, too much, but it'll help us with all kinds of the generation of um, textures and and uh, filters and everything that we'll use on our shirts. Uh, probably not going to do too much of that this tutorial, but um, yeah, it's definitely uh, something you're going to want in there. So yeah, the little plus button here next to channels, add an ambient occlusion. And now we're going to click the big mesh maps button. Um, the only thing I'm going to remove is the ID because uh, we don't have an ID set up on our model. Uh, everything else should work though. So that's it. That's all we got to do. Let's bake these and we can watch it go through uh, the cycles here. Should get a check on all of these. Just give it a minute. There we go. And we're done. Now our shirt's all ready to go. We got all our, uh, all the proper base texture files for our PBR to make our textures. Um, another thing, I'm not going to really go over PBR with you guys and, and what all these values mean because it's just too much. So um, you, you're going to have to go ahead and research that yourself. It's th There's not that much info on it. So uh, you should be able to get a grasp on it within an hour or two uh, of reading. Should be no problem. Watch a video or two. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty easy to understand. It's just like... You kind of got to understand it when you're using substance so you know how to create a certain type of material. Like say I wanted this to be silk or I want it to be a knitted sweater or, you know, I want it to be like a rubber material. Um, you can do all that, but you got to kind of know sort of how to create that kind of texture. I mean... You do and you don't. There are a lot of textures made for us, um, but you're all, you're always going to run into situations where you want a very specific kind of texture that's not available. So you're going to have to kind of understand how that works. And, you know, over time you will get it. But it's going to be really important with uh, how layers work in this as well, our layers here. Anyways, um... So I can show you a whole bunch of stuff. There's many, many, many different ways we could texture this shirt. Um, I'm going to start with start with uh, smart materials because they're really easy and um, yeah, they're all set up for you. So what smart materials are is it's a grouping of of a bunch of different layers and generators and filters and all kinds of stuff all uh, tied together into one single um, you know drag and drop type thing so we have a towel here I usually stay within the you know the fabrics for this um, you can literally start with anything we could start with nothing but I'm gonna show you this just to get started uh, military unicolor um, yeah, let's just give it a camo. Give our shirt a camo here. And give it a second while it loads. There we go. Now we got a camo, and uh, it's giving it a little bit of a texture as well, as you can see. Um, kind of nice. Now we can open up our... Uh, our smart material here and we can look at how it works and everything so this is our our base fabric it's a it's a material mode the fabric so you know you can actually define which colors are gonna be in here it's kinda neat so you know you can make that like that kind of uh, camo where it looks like you're uh, you're gonna hide in uh, Grimace's closet or something. I don't have no idea. I have that purple and pink camo that people seem to like. 
Well, that's like our, our base color there. Let's go back to the main color. Anyhow, we don't have to mess with that. Um, sorry, hit the mic there. Um, but yeah, uh, that's a good way to just, uh, you know, look at, at how that um, certain inputs will work. Um, now we got some masks here and stuff. Um, this is just a fill layer. All it's doing is filling this dark color for the dirt on the shirt. Which uh, is probably at the bottom of the shirt here from the looks of it. It's pretty subtle. Pretty subtle on this shirt. But we can take a look at the dirt. And we got a generator on here. A dirt generator. So, pretty neat. Anyways, let's get rid of this. Um, and I'll show you some stuff from scratch. So let's start with a fill layer because that'll uh, that'll give us our base color. Let's give it a base color. And uh, I'm going to turn off everything here that I'm not going to use. So we got color, height, roughness, metal, the normal, and the ambient occlusion. So all I'm going to use is the color. Uh, so we'll start off with just, let's make ourselves a, a, a dark red shirt. See now, it's showing through, um, obviously we don't want our shirt to look like it's made of plastic, like it's looking right now. So we can turn up this roughness a bit, and we can turn it like all the way up. Do about 7.5, I think, would be probably good for a t-shirt. Maybe even a little bit more here. So there, we got a, a little bit of a better base. See, now um, <clears throat> we got basically a base for our shirt. So now we can add in maybe, let's add another fill layer which will overwrite the fill layer that we're doing now. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. Let's, um, let's add a white mask. We'll click on this white mask and, and add a generator and see what we can do, what we can come up with here. So there's only a few generators by um, default here. Let's try it out. Fiberglass does, definitely does not look great. So let's try a different one out. That actually kind of looks neat, but we'll definitely have to to uh, mess with it a bit to bring this dirt level. See, that's a uh, that's kind of weird, eh? <laughs> See, it's all uh, tweaking and messing around. You can get some pretty cool things. I mean. This probably would not be a shirt that I'd wear, but, you know, we're just messing around here, trying out some different stuff. Yeah, most of these aren't, aren't seeming to work very well. So we can just go ahead and remove the generator and remove the, the mask. All right, so I'll add a paint layer now, and I'll show you guys how you would, like, put a logo on the shirt. It's a, kind of a, you know, a really important thing. So this is a paint layer, it's not a fill layer. Paint paint layer there, fill layer there. Um, so put logo. You know, I can't spend too, too much time on this. As I said, I don't wanna make this four hour video and I do wanna show you guys the deck a little bit. <coughs> but yeah, so um, we got our logo here. Let's go over to the side here and we'll click the projection. And this is going to be where we're going to put our logo. So again, let's go down and turn everything off except for the color. All we're going to want is the color with this. You know, you could have a little bit of a shiny. Actually, let's do that. Let's add a little bit of roughness into this and we'll have a little bit of a shiny logo just so it, you know, looks crisp and, uh, and nice. Now, I didn't prepare a logo, so we're going to use Bart Simpson. Trademark Fox Television, or whatever. 
All right, you press S to uh, resize, scale, rotate um, the uh, the your uh, projection here. So there, I got line up up pretty good on the shirt, and we can just paint them right on. Oh, uh, we got a little bit of a problem here though. The shine is showing through to the whole thing whole picture which is not what we want so now we can look at it from this one and see we got our logo on there it's a little bit stretched out on his foot but it's not too too bad but what we could do now um, if we want to keep this shine the way it is uh, there's a number of ways you can do it the easiest possible way to do it would be to create a separate texture that's just a gray or black or white texture to define the amount of, uh, of and have it, you know, the exact same texture, just him as a silhouette, white or black or somewhere in between to define the amount of, of roughness here. Whereas black would be like completely shiny and white would be not shiny at all. So if you made a silhouette of him white he would not be shiny at all um yeah but this way where i didn't do that it does leave this here so we can we can click the do the eraser and uh let me see here we can actually erase by uh you know selecting these so we'll turn off everything except for the rough and we'll only er erase that roughness so, so now I can erase this rough without, t without hurting the color that I created here. So we basically, now he's basically not shiny anywhere. Or, you know, if you really wanted to take the time, you could, you could go in and, uh, you know, make this a hard brush and really tiny and come in and completely remove it leaving only him but like I said it'd be just tons easier if you know how to use Photoshop or anything to just create a silhouette of this exact same picture and just put it in that roughness so like where we had him set up you could just drag that grayscale one in here see we could technically put this one in here but it's gonna make a really weird shine because you know his eyes are going to be like super shiny and then the black lines are not going to be shiny or sorry the black lines around him will be super shiny and his eyes and teeth won't be shiny at all his socks will be shiny just because the it goes by color right so the gray scale whichever's brighter will be less shiny it always seems like brighter should be more shiny but it's not anyways now we've made ourselves a shirt Bart El Barto so get yourself a Bart Simpson shirt oh there's still a little bit of a uh, little bit of traces there so obviously if we had color selected we would erase Bart too but if we don't have color selected our color stays intact and we can erase you know whatever else we wanted to do uh, this is really 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 helpful when you're painting and everything to understand how all this stuff works um, so there we got ourselves a Bart shirt um, what we could do even if we were really really wanted to be super super cool create ourselves another paint layer here and we're gonna call it stitches that is not how you spell stitches. But whatever. This isn't a spelling competition. I'm just showing you guys stuff. So um, for stitches, obviously, we're going to want a little bit of height. Um, roughness, metal, normal. We don't need that. So we're going to put the height up, you know, 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is fine. It, that should be high enough for a stitch to look like it's coming out. And white stitches are probably fine. Um, actually, I'm going to turn the 
roughness on just to make sure that it's all the way not reflective because I don't want these stitches to be reflective at all. And now we're going to cl click on all over here. And this is an easy way to find stuff. Just type stitch. So there we got some stitches here. So now I'll zoom in on our shirt here a little bit. See, I'm not going to really, really do this. But we could if we wanted to. We could. Oh. I should, probably shouldn't have turned that out. Anyways. Um, I don't know why that's being weird. There we go. Obviously, not going to spend the time to do this properly. You got to kind of rotate as you go and everything. You can space them out a little bit better, you know, with these, uh, these, um, the stitch alpha in here. We can, uh, we can mess with, with how this will look. Because obviously that's, that's pretty terrible. But anyway, showing you that's how you'd make stitches if you wanted to. Um, as you can see, they pop out a little bit, which is really nice. Uh, will look really nice. Uh, in the game and everything it's right now it just kind of looks like like a like a what do you call that puka shell ne necklace <laughs> it's like or like a, if they're bigger it'd be like like a, you could make a marge shirt with marge pearls around <laughs> anyhow uh, just an example of how to do it like I said I'm not gonna spend tons of tons of time on this again if we wanted to you know add another draw layer in add some dirt to the shirt we could do that um, basically the same sort of same sort of thing put the the height down super just so it's just tiny tiny and we'll get ourselves like a like a brownish and go to brushes on the side here we'll grab ourselves a dirt brush and put a little bit of dirt Now, like, we can cycle through the colors a little bit here. Get a little bit of uh, lighter dirt in some areas. It adds a little bit more realis realism when, uh, you know, there's some different color layering of dirt and everything. Um, again, I'm obviously not spending time on this. But that's, that's pretty much it. And, you know, we want to add a new fill layer. It's going to end up overriding pretty much everything we've done you can see still the normal showing through but you know you'd want that if you were going to do this so anyways i'll show you how to export this here so let's go down to export textures and you're going to click on this uh config here and just scroll down to the hd render pipeline um, the HDRP fixed is my own personal one that I use, but you can just use this one. It'll work fine. Select yourself a place. Um, you know, desktop's fine for me. So desktop. And we got our shirt Bart texture. Um, we can look at the configuration, but again, I don't want to go into all that with you guys. So we'll just hit export. And this will give us the two files we're going to use for the shirt. So we're not going to use the mask, which is basically, yeah, we're not using this. Because this, all this would do is just tell the shirt how to shine in the light. But since we're not going to change that file, uh, we don't need that. But we got our shirt color here where... You'd uh, put it into the game under shirt color. And then we got um, our normal file where basically all you're going to see is, um, you know, the little line of the only thing we put in with normal that's raised at all. <laughs> so you put that in there as well. 
and that's it that's it for a shirt um, these two files so shirt color and shirt normal you would put into um, your asset bundle and you'd be done or if you didn't want to use the normal and use skin editor then just the shirt color but it's gonna look a, a ton better with with the um, the normal too and it'll also look way better once you get the shine working as well but I'm um, again I'm not gonna go into that today it's too much so anyways um, I'm gonna throw this project in the garbage and we're gonna open a new one so same setup as last time uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up a deck this time now this is a deck that I've created um, it is the default deck and it's also not I used the default deck to create this just because it's easier for substance and we will discard our changes and there our deck is loaded so yeah so we'll go through the same thing we did last time except for you know there's a bunch of different layers in our texture setup here so you know this also makes it really easy to deal with um, say we want to hide our trucks we can hide our trucks want to hide the hardware still got the bushings there hide the bushings hide the wheel we just got the deck now uh, you know and then you know if you want to just look at it yeah basically you can hide and show everything here it's really nice really easy and you know whatever you're selected here is all you're gonna be painting so if I had the hardware selected all I'm gonna be able to paint is like the kingpin um, the bolts on the side they're all the same texture um, so if you paint any of these they'll all be the same I actually don't even bother with those I just use the default one I just use my normal and my shine that I create for them that's all so yeah um, we're going to turn our thingy Tomiko so our board looks more normal and then we'll go to our texture sets and again ambient occlusion and now we'll bake our maps turn off the ID because we're not using that and we'll click bake all texture sets this time that option wasn't there last time but now we have a bunch of texture sets so we'll bake them all and this will take a bit longer so bear with me please It does look pretty neat how it does this though. <laughs> like, ah, so that's how that works. And we're done. All right, so we're ready to paint. Um, I'm only going to use smart materials in this last part here showing you the. the the deck because yeah it's a little bit too too much stuff to do um, one thing I can show you that'll make it super easy on you um, is that uh, you know adding a new fill layer here oh we're slowly uh, loading it there we go so um, all right, so we can just grab ourselves a deck texture here, just any deck texture you've made before or one you like. Here's a Johnny Geiger one. I didn't make this. I just, well, like, obviously didn't make it. I made the texture. I put it together, but it's not. It's the actual revived deck. So, um, yeah, you just drag it in there. As long as your UV projection, you have a scale of 1-1, one, one, rotation 0, everything 0, then this will fit on here nicely. It'll just pop right in. It just, you know, the shading's not going to look right. Uh, we got no normal here. Everything is really flat. It's going to need some work to start looking, start looking proper. But it's a good start, you know. 
and I don't want to take forever showing you how to make every part of a deck. So if you made a deck before, you got you got that now, and you know you can do many of the things I showed you with the shirt, where we can add layers in and, and paint some dirt on this, or you know you can even you can even just uh, add add yourself a mask in here and delete some of this. So like we can add a white mask, and we can just delete some of the the board if you wanted to right kind of neat move that mask all right so bushings material um well actually let's just start with the trucks trucks are really easy um we'll grab ourselves a smart material here scroll down grab some steel maybe some aluminum now nah, we'll grab some steel so we got some steel stain steel scratched Steel scratch sounds good to me. So we're going to drag it right onto the trucks. And wait for it. Yeah, the I have to apologize. My computer is not the greatest computer that ever lived. But there we got some metal on our trucks little bit of scratches there obviously not the most realistic scratches but the metal is looking crap tons better than the old default metal already without even doing anything so now if we wanted to actually scratch these up like proper trucks we can add ourselves a paint layer and all I'm gonna add is just height and I'm gonna give it some negative height here like maybe 0.2 just to try it out. Point two is probably a lot. Uh, we'll go to our brushes. We're gonna grab some scratch brush. Where's our scratch brush? There's, we got one here. Um, scroll in, bring our brush down, and got some scratches. There we go. We've embedded them right in. Obviously, really, really ugly and not what we want at all. Again, if you if you uh, if you want to fix any of your mistakes, like I said, grab yourself the the uh, eraser here and turn it to only remove what you want removed. So in this case, I added some height I don't want there, so I'll just take it off while leaving the spots I do want to have scratches still scratched up um, obviously this is a terrible job but just showing you quick again um, now we can grab ourselves some wheel material and we can use the same material for the wheels as we would for um, you know uh, we got some plastic rubber let's try that out let's drag that right on there And give it a sec. Again, my uh, computer's really slow. And you know, since we have the wheels separated and everything, actually that's not too bad. These wheels aren't too bad. They look a little bit rubbery, but that's okay, that's fine. And we can use the exact same thing for the bushings. So you just drag them onto the bushings. And we got black bushings as well. Now we can go in here and go down to the color and, and define a different color. It's like maybe we want red bushings. You know, or um, back to our wheels. We want, uh, you know. I want some yellow wheels. There you go. And you can see the little bit of uh, the ambient occlusion inside the wheel there, making it a little bit dark for us already, which is nice. It's really nice. So yeah, that's about it. Um, if we did have a, a wheel texture we wanted to use, we could actually put it just right in here. That should technically work. Um, let's try that out. Let's try it out. Let's grab a wheel texture. Yeah, there we go. So I just dragged um, just 
a low life wheel texture in there. Uh, different board. It's a complete. It's a complete. Uh, it's a complete setup here. But because I'm only putting it on the the wheel the wheel material, that's the only part that's going to show up is the wheel material. And yeah, looks really nice. Um, good start. Good start. Uh, these were obviously black wheels, so yeah. And you know, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I wanted to show you guys. Um, there's a lot to this program, um, and you might see, get a little bit frustrated at first, but like, don't give up. It's totally worth it in the end. Um, and I will include my model that I made here with the separated textures, because it's so much easier to paint than the default one where it's all one piece. Um, really difficult to paint the board color while the truck is, uh, you know, without affecting the trucks. It's it's just so much easier when everything's separated this way. Like I showed you with the assigning different materials to the different parts. It's very, very simple. Um, yeah, it's great. So I'll, in the um, description of this YouTube video, I'll have a link to this skateboard that I made. Um, well, it's the it's the skateboard from the game that I remixed to work with Substance Painter a little bit better. Give you guys a little bit of a head start and make it easier on you to make your own kick-ass decks and trucks and wheels and whatnot. Um, you know, there's going to be some other issues with getting the shine to work properly in game, but... I'll be around to help you guys and everything. I can possibly do another video later. But yeah, that's it. Again, um, the one thing about this is uh, when you export this, you're going to end up with five different versions of each thing. So that your wheels are going to be separated from your trucks. The hardware is going to be separated from the trucks, bushings, deck material. Um, and then you're going to have to manually rejoin them all. Which, um, if you've created decks before, it shouldn't be too hard for you. So, yeah, you shouldn't have too hard of a time. But anyways, that's all I wanted to show you guys today. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, of course, just slap them down in the comment section. I don't give a fuck if you like this video or don't like it. I'm, I'm not looking for anything. So, yeah, do what you do. And thanks for watching. Uh, We'll see you guys uh, next time.